Closed? Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I watch your show sometimes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so my brother would like, my brother watches you all the time. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty so you good. You've you been fishing at? Yeah, I wanted to hunt cichlids. What are they doing, making a movie? Yeah, and you know what, they stay right up in here, but. Welcome back to Ed Hood Fishing. We got through, oh man, I got fans everywhere. That really surprised me when he came out and it's like, hey, he knew me and all that. It's David back there. Now what's going on is they're filming a movie way down at the end of the road and they just don't want anybody on the road those guys back there were nice enough to let me come this way and fish here we were gonna fish that bank right there but look at it it's just full of high sense. so actually this is probably gonna work out to our favor we'll see if the movie people get upset about me being over here but I don't think they will we could always go further down we're looking for big cichlids and whatever we're actually the title of this video is actually fishing for stuff to eat but honestly it's probably going to be cichlids in the pan tonight we'll see we'll see there are other big pan fish in here cichlids are not a pan fish but they're going to fit in the pan just like any other pan fish it's actually rio grande cichlids that i'm targeting today that's what's in here oh man they, they just like tilapia should be good let's go I'm going to go with my preferred way of doing this. It's one of my favorite things to do. Got a little bit of dried red worm on there. We're going to drop shot. Now, I already have this tied up. But one thing I wanted to point out, besides just showing you how to tie this up, you always have to have your, this kind of presentation. The hook has to be like this. It can't be facing your line. It has to be facing out. That is a pretty good natural presentation. You're going to have a solid hookup ratio like that. Now, you will catch fish if you have it presented wrong, which would be the point facing your lead line there. All right. So, to drop shot, you don't necessarily need to use live bait. You could put a little tiny sockele tube or crappie tube on this little Aberdeen hook that I'm using. The idea of drop shotting is putting the bait in the fish's face. The fish are probably going to be right off the bottom and I don't know the particular depth uh, out there in front of this bank that I'm fishing today because I've never fished this particular spot. The movie people have me checking out new spots today. So that's the idea here. The lead is about six to seven inches below the hook and I can perch jerk. That's kind of what we call it. I'll get more into it as I get this line wet. What do we have in front of us? It actually looks kind of shallow for a few feet. So let me get some of this Johnson out of the way. And we are going to put this out about 10 feet in front of me, right there in front of that hyacinth, and see if we can find the drop off. If I could find a drop off or the break line that we sometimes call it in a pond, I'll probably find the fish holding right there. And it's probably really small pan fish hanging out in this shallow bit underneath this hyacinth. But I'm looking for big cichlids and ooh, there's a bite right there. Big cichlids and big pan fish. Oh, got one already. Look at that, it's a cichlid, it's not big enough. By law, I'm not supposed to release these because they're an invasive species to this part of the country. They are native to North America, but South Texas and North Mexico. These guys have little tiny, what look like teeth on their jaws. Somebody said they look like human teeth, but I disagree. Got something small here. Oh, got a bite right off there. Oh, got a runner. Got him on. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it's all fired up too. That is nice. Oh, that's down in there too. Well, let's see if I can get it out. That's almost big enough to eat, but not really quite. Not by my standards. David and the roadblock has moved on. I thought they were going to be there a while. They went all the way down where they're filming. Maybe that means 
we can go to one of my preferred spots kind of a deep hook i got it out with my forceps just fine we're gonna keep this not to eat but for bait for later we've got a catfish session tomorrow before i go across the way to where all the hyacinth is i'm gonna try this culvert there is some stuff popping off and i think there's some big panfish here you never know where the hyacinth is going to be the wind has changed a little bit since i was last out here and just like a lot of places in america right now we're gripped with heat kind of a little heat wave some places are hotter than here it was only in the low 90s today but very humid feels much hotter than it actually is and we've got a big system coming up out of the gulf that's going to be here maybe as early as friday it'll be affecting us it looks like it's going to give us a few days of wetness big rainmaker may be a tropical storm by the time it gets here oh there's something right in front of these culverts oh these stone culverts are a good place to find cichlids because for some reason cichlids relate to rock oh oh that's actually better than a cichlid and that is just big enough to go in a pan nice goggle eye they get bigger but that'll work put that on a cracker i wanted to talk about perch jerking right here at this spot but it might not be a great place to do it the sun is in my eyes so it's in your eyes too so you can't really see what i'm doing you might be able to what i'm doing is i'm just vertically jigging but i'm trying not to take my weight off the bottom so much i'm moving that worm up and down wiggling it a little bit to get a little more attention which works and that's why people call this perch jerking when they're drop shotting and sometimes people will perch jerk with a different sort of rig but I know perch jerking, perch jerking best with the drop shot rig. Look guys, I was talking to one of my little fans here. I had that just laying in there. Got something for the pan to go with that goggle eye. Yeah. This is the culvert on the other side of the road. Thought I'd give everybody a break, including myself from having the sun in our faces. Here we go. Could use that as bait. It's not big enough to eat. Oh, there is something right there. Let's see if he's still there. Got him. Well, that's almost a big enough. Yeah, we have to keep it anyway. Nice cichlid. Nice, oh, yeah. They get much bigger than this, but that is decent. Gas power kid just went by. Oh, that is fired up, look at that. Really pretty. Okay, nice. Oh, not very big, but there are cichlids inside the culvert as well as outside of it. Well, we all knew that it was likely, right? Let's see if there's a big one in there. Bite, 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 bite. Yes. Oh, another cichlid out from under there. A little bigger than the first one that came out of there. He's got some lesions on him. See him? Weird little lesions. I've caught cichlids out of here like this before. Let's see if he's clean on, fairly clean on one side and full of sores on the other. I think those fish over at the culvert overheard me talking to myself and got creeped out. The bite really slowed down there. So I've come over to the pond 
we're getting really close to sunset. This is the side that I like on this pond, but there's a lot of hyacinth here. I've caught a lot of nice fish here. That's the main reason why I like it. The drop off is not too far out. It's not a real deep drop off, but it is there. So I think we can do something here. Let's try it. Oh no. Oh, that was a nice hit right there. I wonder what that was. Nice. Got him. What do we got here? Whoa. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I mean, it's not big enough to eat really, but it's good size for other things. Here we go. Another little bluegill. I wonder if that's what's here. There's a lot of activity right in front of me. Nice, got him. Oh, not very big though. What an epic sunset it's turning out to be. Not very big. Oh my gosh, there's nothing but gills over here. Got one. What do I got? Oh, come on out of there. Look at that. Nice. Ooh. He put up a good fight. That was awesome. Look how fired up he is. Oh, I didn't even realize you were there. Somebody yelling at me? Oh, nice one. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that was a good hit right there. Yeah, you're right. Look at that. <laughs> it's nothing big, nothing special, but a lot of fun. He's kind of not looking, huh? Looks interesting. There's the horns, you know what that means. Those horns means sunset. And it also means it's about to get Skeeterlicious out here. It's actually just starting to get Skeeterlicious. So we could go cook right now, but let's just get away from the mosquitoes a little bit. We might just hit the culvert. I don't, you know, I'm indecisive. That's what I'm trying to say. I want to keep fishing. Don't want to get bit by mosquitoes. Don't want to put on off. Decisions, decisions, decisions. The biggest reason why I want to keep fishing is because there's only one goggle eye in the tote. And I'm going to eat it, but I would like two. So the goggle eye bite usually picks up as you get into the evening, as it gets dark. But the cichlid bite usually drops back or totally dies when it gets dark so i don't think we're going to catch any more cichlids i mean we could because we have some light though it's fading let's just hit the culverts and then call it after that oh man guys i walked right down here barely got that wet didn't even realize i had it in the water i got a bluegill all right let's try that again i just barely got it in the water Is there anything else down there? I guess I just got lucky. Oh, nope. Oh, not the same size, but that's cool. Not big enough. Oh, ho. oh, yes, that'll do me. That's nice. Look at that. Just a little guy. 
Oh, little guy again. Woo, looking pretty. Man, that's enough fun for one afternoon. Time to go cooking, come on. All right, guys, welcome to the kitchen. I did all the prep off camera. Here we got green chili, onion, potato, carrot. I've already got the oil hot. Let me get these vegetables in here. There we go. So I'm going to fry this fish tonight. I've got a mix of all kinds of things, but we're gonna make a curry to go with it. Make it a Japanese curry here. These are the basic ingredients of the Japanese curry, which is also called a navy curry. Now, I'm only gonna cook this in the oil for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna do something else. Now that I'm at the 10 minute mark, I'm gonna add two of these full of water. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of this. This is dashi. Look at that, bonita soup stock. It's basically an instant fish stock. Bonita is like skipjack tuna. This is a Japanese instant fish stock. I'm gonna gently stir that in without making a mess. I'm gonna bring this back up to a boil and let it cook for about 14 minutes or so. Sometimes it takes 18, but I think this small batch is only gonna take about 14 minutes. While I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and get oil heated up for the fish. Start cooking the fish. Look at that, there's our fillets. Now this is a mix of bluegill, warmth, and cichlid. It's a good amount of little fillets. I have a bowl here with a beat up egg in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the fillets in it. And with my hand, dredge them around in that egg. We're using Zatarin's fish fry tonight. Here we go. These are all very small fillets, very thin. That oil is pretty hot. It should not take long to cook these. Pretty much looking for these to get golden brown. This is the first flip. All right, I would say the first batch is done and it's almost time to add the curry roux into our curry. This is the curry that I'm gonna to use tonight, golden curry. Now it's an instant curry, comes in blocks. I'm gonna use just one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in there. On the box it says hot, but that is not hot enough for me. That's why I added chili. You might not wanna add chili. I'm gonna go ahead and take the heat off. I just totally turned it off and let this melt, kind of stir it in a little bit. Might wanna add some water, because sometimes, sometimes it just comes out too thick. You don't want this like thick like a paste. You want a, a gravy pretty much. So we'll see, might add up just a little bit of water to make it not so thick. Yeah, I'm gonna add some water to this. As always, I'm having this with rice. First, I'm gonna put curry over the rice. I'm not gonna eat all this fish tonight, just a, a bit of it. Some of this is going to be breakfast. <clears throat> There's a dog behind me who thinks I made too much so I would share it with her, but she's going to be mistaken here in a little bit. There we go. Curry's gotta be like one of my top favorite dishes to make. I've made it twice this week already. Yeah, you're right, let's try a piece of fish. Mm. Wow. For a multi-species dish, this is really good. I just love curry too, but really good. It's got some fire to it. It's pretty hot. Mmm. Wow. Let me try another piece of fish before we start to wrap this up. Fire. Absolute fire. Oh man, my goodness. I want to keep eating this, but it is hot in here right now. We got the AC off and the overhead fan. It is cooking. The bedroom is hotter than the kitchen. So I want to give a big shout out to David and Richard. 
It was nice meeting you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciated all the help you gave me in the beginning, David. And also, I want to give a shout out to all the little fans that I met today. It was pretty cool to meet y'all too. All right, so without further ado, I really thank you guys for watching and subscribing. You got me a long ways, especially in the last month or so. A lot of you are new and a lot of you are old and been with me for a while. I thank you so much. Now, I will see you next time.